Welcome once again, all you Warhammers and Warhammies. Uh, you have uh, lucked out today because you stumbled across the best episode to date of the Big M Power Hour. Uh, today with me, as always, of course, is Coal of the Sea. How you doing? Hey, how's it going? Good. I didn't realize I was of the sea now, but well, I'll mean, take it. You even got the little Deep. thing. You got it right I, over your yeah, shoulder. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm gonna own it now. It's fine. What's your what's the what's the current ITC ranking? Uh, low. Not not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, fifth in Nightneth Deepkin Land, but like low. See, otherwise. That's like, no, 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 no. We're not worried about yeah. the other fish in the sea, or not worried okay. about the non-fish in the sea. Is what I should the say. The non-fish, yes, yes. And of course, uh, everyone who uh, is familiar with the main show um, is already familiar with Narrative Neil. Narrative Neil. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well, or title. What do you mean, Neo? Wow. <laughs> there you uh, go. I mean, if you want to, if you want to try and take the Neo title, we can absolutely work on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, how how many people were at bars this past weekend? Uh, thirty. Well, thirty three played in it, and there was yeah. only actually thirty two spots. So we had a ringer who was jumping around. <laughs> there <laughs> See, you go. So there you go. Rookie numbers. Got to get that up into the hundreds. <laughs> You're gonna get. That. <laughs> To pump them up. Uh, well, uh, as always, we have uh, so much. Uh, uh, we have so much one-hour content to get into two hours. We're just going to go ahead and uh, get into it. We do got a little bit of news this week, just because there's a bunch of extra stuff that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, I apologize in advance, Neil. There's going to be a little 40k, a little 40k. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll find a way. You know, we'll do a little exercise. We'll do a little exercise. Well, I can't wait uh, for this. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. But let's uh, go ahead and uh, start it off with the news here. Oops, sorry, folks. There we go. All right. So uh, this is, again, going to be for Cole. <laughs> uh, the very first article we're yeah. touching base today is the Grey Knight Castle and Crow model. Um, Neil? It, it looks you, great. Yeah, real quick, Neil, do you have any input on the Castle and Crow Grey Knights model? It looks amazing. Great. That's what we like. It's positivity on this show. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got nothing bad to say about it. So yeah. Um, so I. So yes, I. I think it's a great model. Uh, the problem is, it. It looks like it's Primaris. Um, it looks like it's Primaris ratio. Yeah, he's a bigger boy, especially compared to everyone else around him. And in all honesty, like I said, I mean, if they wanted to release new, new Grey Knight models, even if they just wanted to have one Power Armor kit and one Terminator kit of just a little bit bigger scale and just not say anything about it. Right. Just not even notice. Yeah. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Uh, like I said, the sculpt is great. Um, like I said, that's the only thing that, that kind of bugs me. I was like, and of course... A little disappointed they're not getting more models than just this one, but well, yeah, of course, uh, you know, GW hates bringing out new things. So, uh, are you sure? Have you been paying attention to anything like AOS as of late? I think they like new things. They just don't like 4K no, 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 no. They, they, yeah. they, they would rather create four new armies instead of coming out with one revamped old kit. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> that is exactly what they're doing. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Just one second here. <laughs> what do you mean? I, I, we're all enjoying it. Yeah, it's okay. It's anything. a happy doggo. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> so the uh, so then they gave us the new. They showed us off the new uh, cruel boys. Uh, vulture person. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Now Neil's interested. Yeah. My ears perked up, just like the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so so now here's... So we'll, we'll let you start off, Neil. What do you think of of the new Vulture? Oh, I like everything to do with the Cruel Boys. In fact, um, if I did start a Destruction Army, I'd be hard-pressed not to start that army. Um, probably take me three years to paint half of it, <laughs> but that's Okay. Because it's packed full of detail and looks really cool. Um, the vultures and everything, I mean, it's just amazing. It kind of takes me back to old fantasy a little bit, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I just think it, I just think it's great. Can't get enough of it. 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, Cole, you got anything to add? No, I just love the the throne that they build on top of the vulture. It's great. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and that's one of the things that I find... Uh, honestly, one of my biggest reactions to it was, like, whenever I saw a vulture, I was like, oh, my God, it was, a, it was an animal that didn't even... Like, if you would have said, make a list of, of flying mounts for the Cruel Boys, Vulture would not have been on, like, my top 10 or 20 list. But seeing it, it's immediately like, yes, that's that's the exact right choice. There's nothing else. Um, there's nothing else. <laughs> there was no other option. Yeah. And I do think it's interesting that the named character is a wizard, and the non-named is a, a, a killer boss. Yeah. So there's no generic caster on Vulture, which I think is very interesting. Uh, and the narrative character is so on point. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, ah, uh, Kragno said, I get everything. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, if, if you guys get a chance, uh, read or listen to the book Dominion. If you want a little uh, insight into Cruel Boys and just, um, there's another uh, book they put out about Gloom, I think it was called Gloom Spite. And just what they do with the, with the destruction, uh, the, at least these two factions in destruction, mm -hmm. really, I mean, it really skirts horror. I mean, it's, it really puts mm. the, these guys in a, in a place where you're like, wow. I mean, that is, like, it's pretty messed up. And when you, when you see the models and then you compare it to that story and everything, it just, it just, you just see how well it's interpreted into the models and everything. It's, it's great. So the whole thing. Awesome. Yeah, they, so far these cruel boys, I said, I hope the rules match how cool these models are because um, yeah. I definitely want to see them on the table. Uh, now, oh, I do have to say, one of the reasons why I'm not starting, besides the fact that I already have too many armies, is like, I don't want the responsibility to have to paint these guys, and I am not looking forward yeah. to seeing the, the, um, the bunted... <laughs> painting attempts on these armies. <laughs> yeah, no, it's these are great, full of detail. That is exactly why I won't be painting any because I know how hard it is to get myself to paint, and whew, yeah, you can spend hours on all these details. <laughs> um, yeah, so the next thing that came out um, was the the uh, the terrain that's coming out uh, separately and with the new Dominion box set. Um, Personally, I love the direction that it's going in. Uh, what I have shown everyone right now is the the big, like, I don't know what you want to call it, the mystic gazebo. Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. Has the, the ball with the chains and everything, and I don't know what it is, but I know what I like. And that's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> the statue is super cool. I love the walls. I love how the walls are being, like, reinforced with wood. Um, yeah. I think Again, that... if, uh, if if you do want to know what that stuff is, uh, read that book. It tells you all about it. Okay. Okay. Don't read. We don't. We don't encourage reading here. You guys just skip it. <laughs> skip it. Now, I do have to say. <laughs> so for the. So I got two of the the Realmscape expansion sets, which is. The one L wall, the one small wall, the two statues, and like a little thing of scattered terrain. I do think that was a little, little, little hefty, a little hefty costed for for what's in there. I mean, whenever you think about a table, you're talking about if you want to do an entire table of just this, you're probably going to need at least six walls, four walls maybe, and now you're talking like two hundred dollars worth of terrain. That's like. Maybe we could maybe we could just recalibrate a little bit, boys. <laughs> just yeah. a little. Um, but like I said, as far as that goes, it, it's still uh, you know still really nice looking. Um, I think it's going to go well with the Azurite ruins, and I also think it's going to go well with the Sigmarite uh, Storm Vault stuff. So uh, okay, um, you, you know how much I love terrain. I. I, I tend to agree with you, though. I wish I wish the terrain did come a little bit cheaper. You know, I don't have a, a problem paying for highly detailed models and at the right. prices you know that are currently you know flying around out there. But I, I do wish the terrain was a little bit cheaper, just so you could get a little bit more of that on your table and then focus more on the models as well. But yeah. you know, 
Right. I mean, gonna do. and that's one of the things is like, so in the last month, I've had two friends get 3D printers who aren't even into wargaming. Yeah. And both of them are like, can we print your terrain? I was like, mm. oh, I guess. Twist my <laughs> arm. Yeah. Yeah. If you go look at NashCon and, and some of the terrain that they're doing for that, it's, it's crazy. It's all 3D printed. Uh, I, I I love the stuff that GW is doing, but yeah. man, I mean, it, it gets to a point. You know, right. We're like, well, you know, yeah. it's not pretty cheap, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so. that's the thing is, and that's one of the things I think we talked about it last month a little bit with we, we were going over pricing and stuff and how prices are going up in general, and it's like this is not the time for prices to be going up whenever you have three D printing becoming as high quality it is as it is with as a it being as affordable it is as it is. Um, yeah. You know, especially whenever you're going to come out and say, like, hey, we're going to sue anybody that, that looks funny at our IP now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like, maybe you guys should probably check your watch before you start releasing stuff. Like, <laughs> But uh, that's that's a whole different show. So let's let's move yeah. along here, here. So, of course, we have to have our uh, obligatory Middle Earth uh, article where they talk about... Uh, the new Dale units. So again, I know you guys are not into into Middle Earth, um, really. Uh, but honestly, Dale slash Lake Town. Well, they are separate armies, but um, it's not exactly the most prevalent army. Okay. Much like much like whenever they came out, whenever um, uh, Forge World came out with the updated Dole Amroth Knights. And everyone's like, oh my god, they're gorgeous. But you never take Dole Amroth on foot. Why did you do this? Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, if these guys... If I can pre-order these guys off of the GW website, I'm probably going to get them. Just because, even though I'll probably never do a Dale army, these guys are 25 or 28 millimeter true scale uh, with the whole line, which makes them perfect for... You know, D&D &D or anything like that if you don't want to play Middle Earth. Okay. Um, and on top of that, the non-Forge World Middle Earth miniatures are typically pretty reasonably priced. Um, so these guys are awesome looking. Um, and I think they're just detailed enough to be standout heroes, but not so detailed that they couldn't be, uh, you know, a random fighter or town guard or something like that so keep an eye out for those if you see them please support the middle earth uh release we definitely want to encourage them and let them know uh it it is a great game and, and it is appreciated so uh but quickly moving along the dragons yeah uh so first up we had uh Krondis, son of dracothian um out of the two of them, I think this is my favorite. What do you guys think? Um, let me figure out which one's which, because now I'm... <laughs> which uh, which one's the red one? Myself. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look Red here. or blue? Red or blue? Uh, <laughs> the red one is Karazai the Scarred. Okay, yeah, that guy. Yeah, for the sure. You like the guy. red one? Uh, I oh, like yeah. the blue one better, personally, actually. Okay. Wow. You guys yeah. are allowed to be wrong. <laughs> Lots of blue wow. ones back here. Listen, you know. You're a, <laughs> you're in the power hour now here, Mr. Ohio. All right. Yeah. <laughs> on the power hour, Krondis is the best one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it's so funny. Like, again, I think the sculpt is just mind blowing. Uh, I love the narrative. I'm really hoping that Kragnos doesn't get super bonuses to to, to stomp on these guys <laughs> he already does he's already got them um, he's, he's definitely getting super bonuses to stomp on these boys <laughs> we'll see we'll see we'll see we will see where keyword bingo happens i have no problem they're, they're already dead matt it's okay <laughs> yeah they are now, monsters they will die um, yeah you will die um so as far as the blue one goes like i said i whatever comes out i don't know how to do that color scheme but i'm not going to change it like typically for for mounts with my with my tealy blue uh models i typically go with like purpley mounts but he's just staying mm -hmm. the way he is like I, both of these characters are staying the way they are um yeah. i feel like their color schemes are too important to be messing around with them 
Um, you can um, you could probably get this this tealish color with uh, nihilic oxide, and then just just messing with that a little bit. You maybe. get close to it. Well, yeah, uh, it might not be exact. Right. But you get close. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go on a little bit of tirade, tirade here. So you know, it, my initial response is well, that's okay. I'll just wait for the Warhammer video to to come out on how to paint them, and like. Just earlier today, I, I pulled up a, a Warhammer painting tutorial video on how to do the Grey Knight armor, and it's uh, like, my dear God, I <laughs> I miss Duncan so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, and again, he's doing great with his channel and everything. Uh, you know, I really like how he takes a little more time, and and you know, everything yeah. on that channel is great. But I also. He was like that half step away from the box art. It was like, hey, we know what it's supposed to look like, but here's the best you can hope for. Like, <laughs> right? Here's what the average person might be able to achieve. Here you go. And but now with with the guys that are there, like again, you can tell they're very skilled. But like, mm -hmm. it's like, here's not what you asked for. Like, it's that meme of like, I want blank. You have blank at home, and then it shows a yeah. picture of blank at home. That's basically what we're getting now. And it's like, come on, guys. Well, hopefully maybe Duncan will get one of these guys, and he'll paint them up. <laughs> um, I feel like he's got to. For the scarred, so like, um, for uh, Kara's eye, uh, I definitely, I definitely don't think I'm going to go with the pink around like the scarring down his body you gonna go for more of a burnt color um i think i might go with more like a more of like a crackling like lightning okay uh because again it like the to me like a pink wound kind of means that it's fresh yep agreed, agreed. and and i don't want to go and i feel like if i go like a dark brown or something like that that it's going to pull the eye too much whereas i think if it's like if it is like a crackly blue it's almost like a oh okay so you can actually like whenever he's charging up to shoot a beam or whatever you can actually see it like right we'll see it might be terrible it's probably gonna be terrible either way <laughs> you know what color i'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with no color because I don't own a Stormcast army, <laughs> and they can only be played in Stormcast armies. So uh, I will I will You're look wrong. at yours and, and think that they're amazing. And uh... Neil, you you worded that incorrectly. You don't own a Stormcast army yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fair. Um, it's actually fair. Now I will say, like, <laughs> and you know, they've Stormcast have always been a has been always a semi elite army, but with the points. Uh, they've shown for, and I know all the points are going to be changing and everything, but with the points they've shown, they have like basic, basically all but confirmed. Hey, we're we're going to go real elite. We're leaning into that. <laughs> yeah, we're, I don't know where you're going to. I have a feeling that uh, the two thousand point army is going to be one of these dragons and um, three two man units of the dragon riders that we'll be getting to. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly what I was gonna predict. Yeah, you're gonna have like a giants type army. Maybe not even. Maybe you get four. Maybe, maybe four of the little <laughs> and, ones. And like I said, maybe. I mean, like, and that's one of the things that like me with my uh, ooh piece of candy mentality. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I kind of follow. I, I kind of get a, a little um, a little lost because I get into these things where I'm like, oh, I'd like to take a little bit of elements of all the different things I like. Uh, and I think at this point, it's basically going to be like, nope, you're going to have to make one army. <laughs> and then that'll be a separate list if you're still into it when you're done painting. Like, <laughs> right. Um, but that's not all we got here. So uh, they, as they continue to double down onto the best uh, yet theme, they came out with an article about the Stormcast Eternals. Uh, Stormcast Eternals becoming the, the ultimate defenders of the more realms in their best battle tome yet. Um, Neil, did you uh, did you look up their uh, auxiliary abilities and whatnot? Um, I've heard some of the abilities, like with the, um, with the they count as three for holding objectives, and they can. Is this what we're talking about? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you know, with bouncing the uh, mortal wounds back, 
thing yeah. with, after they get charged and all that. So I like it. I like it better than, you know, old staunch defender where you just, hey, you get an extra armor, you know. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and like I said, as, mm-hmm. as far as that goes, I I think it's right on point. Um, I'm interested to see how much rules get added because it looks like, um, I forget if I read it on this article or on another website where they were saying that, like, Basically, you can either be Scions of the Storm, where you get your teleporting down, or you can go um, a Stormkeep, and then you get to bring in Cities of Sigmar uh, models for allies, or, or the you know, the one in four, and not count right. as allies. Uh, which, like I said, in all honesty, maybe in the future, if the Dawnbringer Crusade is a real thing, um, but as of right now, I have no... I have no uh, desire to bring in, um, you know, a bunch of dudes wearing pantaloons and poofy sleeves uh, <laughs> with my lightning warriors. Um, Agree. And I also feel like dropping from the uh, clouds is is very important. But um, I think this, I think the ability to hold objectives is fantastic. Uh, I think it's yeah. exactly what they needed. And yeah, what's going to make an elite army work. Right. Because that was one of the problems before is like, oh, here's an elite army. Well, great. You got two guys on there. Woohoo. <laughs> right. Um, and like I said, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be game breaking. Um, and uh, along with the, uh, the ability like, oh, you charged me and I'm, you, you try to take this objective from me? Well, guess what, son? I'm going to give you D3 mortal wounds. Like, yeah, it's... I don't think that's the end of the world. I think it's going to be just enough. Like, if you get run in by, like, 20 skeletons that you might be able to just nick off just a couple more just to keep that edge, the numbers edge. Um, and I also think it would be enough to prevent that hero on foot. You know, like, the, the eight-wound hero. Like, well, I don't... I don't know if I want to take three mortal wounds. Like, <laughs> right. What I like about it, you know, being a corn player is, you know, corn players, we have a lot of mortals that, you know, if you charge me and you kill my guys, I still get to pile an attack back. So if somebody charges in, let's just say you've got like a unit of, you know, whatever, a base unit, yeah. they kill you, you're still doing some, some damage back. Right. Yeah. So you're getting something out of them. You're not just picking your toys up and, and moving them to the side. So I, I did something with them. I affected the game a little bit, even though they got wiped out. So it's always nice when you have rules like that. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. It, and one of the things that I was reading on Facebook was a lot of people like uh, grimacing and grunting about how their army doesn't have this. And it's like, I have a feeling like with after you know BCR came out, after the Giants came out, they've been going, okay, this is an elite. We know that an elite army cannot just be counting as one. So right. I think anyone that's worried, I think I think we're going to be seeing, um, I definitely think we're going to be seeing uh, more rules like this coming up in the future. Um, and then we also got a little bit about, we got some additional rules about Karazai the Scarred, where um, uh, we saw this before, whenever, uh, with the uh, Soul Blight. Um, where if it kills something, it gets a boost. Uh, right. Now, again, with smaller uh, with smaller forces, we'll see how often that happens. Hopefully it'll happen more than once. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, on top of that, like we talked about earlier, we got the Dragon Riders uh, with one of the more interesting videos. Uh, Why I Hate Horses, a love poem by James Workshop. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but yes, we got to see the uh, Stormcast uh, Dragon Riders, like we've been uh, hearing for rumors for a while now and hoping that that is what we're going to get. Uh, I never have I got exactly what I thought I was getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I'll let uh I'll, I'll let you guys uh react first here. I mean Go these ahead, are cool. these are just great. I mean this is making me think uh what is it, Baldur's Gate four for oh, yeah. video game people out there. There's Dragon Knights gonna be in that. I mean this just looks 
great. I just want to see somebody come down and run someone through the spear as a dragon just bites the head off another man. I mean, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I I love to see like a the flaming sword, but then you also have like lances for the first time uh, yeah. in a new a new model. Um, it's almost like Sigmar finally figured out that there are other weapons other than a hammer. Right? <laughs> He's just like, hey, but I'll tell you, it took a while. while. It took like, a while. They, they were they were buried deep back in the armory. Like, <laughs> what? Oh, what are these? I remember these things. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said, honestly, uh, Cole, I know you were bringing up before the flight stand. Uh, yeah. I actually think these, these flight stands don't look bad. I, I kind of hope, and I don't think they would, but what I would like to see them do is create an extra piece. Like one where there's just a hole in the torso where the flight stand goes. And if you're going to use a flight stand, you just pop it right in there and it glues in and it never moves again. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you don't want to do that, there's just a small panel that you can just glue in. Agreed. I'd like to see that too. That to somebody me would be... who doesn't use his flight stands. Right. For somebody um, who has a, a fully boat Caradron army, I like to be able to put uh, magnets in there so that I can take them off the flight stands because if I ever am transporting <laughs> them anywhere, it is yeah. literally impossible to transport anything that large with a flight stand anywhere. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, so yeah, I think you got to be able to fit a, a fairly decent sized magnet in there, um, so that it doesn't go flopping off at every. Yeah, <laughs> every and that chance. is definitely one thing it. that. Yeah. Uh, transportation is definitely one thing I was thinking about because, like, I got the big 720 Magnarack bag to bring um, Teclas around, and I don't think that's big enough for these guys unless, you know. Uh, unless I only need two, which of course then it'll be fine. <laughs> um, yeah. But again, points. Uh, I th I have a feeling this is going to be a very expensive unit. I, I would not be surprised to see it like four fifty five hundred for two. But we will see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's just move right along mm -hmm. into our rumor engines. Get some palate cleanser before we get into some of our um, topics of the day. Uh, so first up from, oh, let's check this out, the 13th of July. Looks like um, some spiky stuff coming out of a thing. Very descriptive. I mean, you're looking at it, right? Yeah, yeah, it's an alder of some sort in my mind. Um, yeah, I definitely think it's the back side of something. Yeah, it's like the back of a chair or something like that. Looks, uh, looks kind of seraphony to me. Exactly. I agree. So I agree. I was kind of thinking ogres. Okay, I can see the crudely riveted metal and all right. that. Because okay. I don't remember the last time Seraphon used. I know they use tusks on things. Not quite so much metal. But they don't yeah. use metal. And so I think if this was Seraphon, these giant spikes coming out of the top would be feathers. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, this could be ogres. This could be slaves of darkness. Um, yeah, okay, I like slaves. That's another I didn't mm -hmm. consider. I know not a lot of chaos iconography on that. Well, again, we're or looking skulls. at the back. <laughs> we're looking or at the skulls. Back. So there the should be at least twenty be skulls. <laughs> what if we just get another cruel boys thing, and this is just <laughs> another cruel boys thing? Uh, yeah, that's cool possible boys. as well. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I think we've we seen everything for the cruel boys. They got a lot of yeah. stuff. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is this is going to be an ogre chieftain throne. What is he riding? It's just a throne. That's it's the just, real question. Oh, no, just a throne. There just he, on his chair. And you're going to see a giant ogre in like the Conan uh, Conan the Barbarian pose just yeah. sitting there. Bring them to me. Neil, what do you think? Yeah. Mm, I mean, I, I'm still going with Seraphon. I just think that if they come out with anything new Seraphon, it's going to be taken a little bit differently than what we've seen before. So right, I that's... agree with the feathers and all that, but I'm, I'm sticking with my original. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, we need to just hammer it down. What is it? What's going to be the name on the war scroll? Oh, jeez. You got me there. So this is going to be the Techno Slon. Is that? 
<laughs> they're, not, they're done with salons, I think. <laughs> um, how about you, Paul? I don't know if I'm trying to think of something for Seraphon here. I would don't be think thinking. about something for Seraphon because it's not. Okay, that. well, that's just I, my that's a dumb guess. <laughs> fine then. In my mind, I like whenever you said chaos. I'm thinking this is some sort of chaos lord, his shrine that he's riding on, something like that. I'll tell. You, I wouldn't be mind. I wouldn't be mad if it was a new chaos war shrine. Yeah, something like that. Mm. <laughs> um, chaos war shrine's fine. It's just those guys on the bottom. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't like um, what's his face is from the Goonies, uh, older brothers, is that? <laughs> I I tried to spend time painting those, and I was like, wow, I, there's there's nothing I can do to this. <laughs> no, no, I can oh. I can only detract. That's all I got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's move along to the uh, July twentieth. Um, this is someone's booty with a. Spike with a wooden stakes, a butcher's axe, and a cleaver. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a some cleaver. free cities. Yeah, it's some free it, yeah. city stuff, right? Agreed. Here. Uh, Agreed. I definitely think this is. Um, I, 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 I'm all on board the, um, the Dawnbringer Crusade, mm -hmm. and I think this. I do think this is a model from that. I think um, these are some stakes up in the top right corner. Yeah. As well. Yeah. For sure. So. But again, like I said that's that's so obviously a a butcher's cleaver mm -hmm. <laughs> hanging off his backside, yep. along with a sledge head. Yeah, um, this is some sort of craftsman who's had to go and do something he didn't want to do. Yes. Yeah. I uh, I know on um, Warhammer Weekly they joked that, or, or not necessarily joke, but like this could be a character that literally comes in and you build terrain with him uh, and if that is the case I would be super happy with that but I, I don't think that's what it is <laughs> not a chance nah. um, alright moving right along July 27th um, top of a tank maybe yeah something 40k-ish um, uh, I see pack rolls to the left and right, I think. So I think more Imperial Guard stuff. I think we're. I think we might get either a new tank or an updated tank. Yeah, something along those lines. I assume Neil has no input on this one. Uh, it's it's something with space. <laughs> That's more good. That's good. I'll take it. <laughs> more seraphim. More seraphim. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> space lizards. Space. Right. Space. And space, then space. Uh, the one today, as of uh, time of recording, the August third. Um, yeah. Blood dripping down over blades. Blood dripping down over blades. I mean, like unless... a forty k something. Maybe that's this is a jaw. how they sculpt blood. Could I be mean, a jaw. Is... Yeah. Yeah. What if that is teeth, and it's just a, a jaw hanging open or no, something? Look, there's two. Like yeah, you can see in the middle much one. Blood for that. Yeah. You can see the middle one has the blade actually coming out, and it ends. Yeah. I. I don't. Maybe it's something a new for like. Corn? Well, I was thinking maybe it's like a new. Um, maybe it's like a new Avatar of Kane model, or maybe a new um, Cauldron do of daughters, Blood. Yeah, I was gonna say, do daughters have a terrain piece? I don't think they do, right? No, they don't have a terrain piece. It could be an Underworld's Underworld's Warband. That is very murdery. I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. Very and, murdery. Well, we'll find out soon enough. We'll find out soon yeah, enough. We will. So, all right. So let's get. Over to us here. Okay, so um, the one thing we didn't really talk about in the news because there was it was spelled out over a hundred different articles was the brand new kill teams coming out soon. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it. And Again, I apologize, Neil. Just <laughs> we'll, we'll get back to yep, your. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know who this is for. <laughs> like I, I feel like it has to be for the newer player at the moment looking at it but here's the thing like if you don't know how to use a tape measure well obviously you have to know how to use a tape measure you just have to know how to convert things <laughs> unless we're going to get a bunch of sticks with a symbol on it which is what I 
think we're getting. I think we saw that I mean, in the in yeah, the box. You're right. Yeah. And it's like, but yeah, no, I. And I I'll agree. tell you what. In in all honesty, at the end of the day, if it was literally just like what we use those for now, it was sort of like, okay, I need to pile in three inches. I'll use my three inch to pile in. That's mm -hmm. fine. But like, whenever you're like, oh, you can use two. Um, parallelograms is how far you can run. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pulling out our measuring tape, and I'm going to go, that's how far. Like, how yeah. are we going to do moving over terrain and stuff? Yeah, that's true. I'm sure yeah, it's going to be happens. something as simple. It's probably going to be like one. Like, it'll probably just be like scatter terrain, one inch, you have to roll a die to jump over or some shit. I, I don't know. Something. Yeah. Um, but I'm still looking forward to it. I'm still going to give it a shot. I still haven't painted my Grey Knight Warband from last edition, uh, which mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to because I did spray them reflective chrome. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. So, now I told you we were going to do a little bit of an exercise here. Cole, what sort of 40k army do you think we could, we could squeeze Neil into? Squeeze Neil into? Yeah. Hmm. Neil, I, I know you're like me and you, you kind of flutter from army to army, but do you have like a specific play style that you kind of kind of gear towards? Hmm. I, I like the combat -y stuff. However, um, I know that's not really a thing. Oh, it's 40K? absolutely a thing in 40k. Oh, it can't be a thing. Oh, my Harlequins don't shoot people. They run up and run them through with a sword. <laughs> I can promise you that. That's, <laughs> yeah. There's a reason that the tank work, commander though? has a sword. Or, or do you just move it? And, and the, the thing is, though, like, I'm going to get some guy who's got, like, a gun and a sword at the same time. I'm going to wonder why he has that sword. Um, I don't know. Listen, I'm not, we're not worried about, we're not worried about your opinion on this. We're just getting you. <laughs> so, okay. Play styles okay. combat, folks. All right, so you like we a combat. We do like combat. Storming. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you like a lot of tricks? Do you like a lot of straightforwardness? Do you like to be tough? Do you want? Straightforward. Straightforward. you know I don't do rules very well. <laughs> now, let me ask this. Do you, um, because I'm thinking, I'm kind of thinking Black Templars. It's uh, Space Marines, right? Yeah. Don't worry about what it is, all right? <laughs> don't, don't worry about what you might be playing. But See, I think, because of how simple Neil would like it, and he enjoys <laughs> this close combat thing. Do you think a tyranny? The man would just... Nah, he just wants to shout wog and run at people. Let's be honest I don't know here. if I see him as a wogger. Nah. No, no not happened. a wogger. Truly, if I if I played 40k, I would just get the big stompy robots, and that would be that. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's just to that's get what done. I thought it was. That's just I am I am a Timmy through and through, in, in almost all sense, in almost all games. Now I here's play. the problem. Nothing wrong with that. Every time mm -hmm. you have an army that reaches top tier, the first thing you do is dust it off and dust the place on the shelf where you're going to be putting them until they suck again, so you can bitch about how they suck. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you known me? That's, that's, that's a very accurate description. So there you go. That's actually the real rule. Space wolves. There you go. There we are. All right. They have big stompy robots. I don't think they do. They have some stompy robots, but they also have space wolves riding large wolves. So you have your space marine ride a wolf. Right. It'll be so fine. It's there fine. There you go. It's fine. Big M Power Hour exclusive. Neil dons the, the space wolf cap. Oof. <laughs> no, not seen it. Not seen it. All right. Thank you for indulging me, Neil. There. Uh, so, uh, before we get on to the main topic of the night of Old World, we did have bars just this past weekend, uh, and like I like I was teasing before we started recording, uh, you know, we'll do our main coverage of that on um, uh, on Strength Hammer proper, uh, which again, Cole, if you you know. If you want to sully yourself on that show again, you're more than I don't on. know. That one time. Oh. <laughs> Still getting emails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so here in Big M Power Hour, we, we prefer our mechanics. We prefer our crunch. So let me, yeah. and I know you put out a survey, but let me survey you. Hmm. 
Um, was there anything that went better than you were expecting? Better? There weren't really as many questions on the overall rules as I thought there would, would be. Yeah. They kind of came in at a, at a fairly steady clip, but nothing that was unmanageable by just me as a singular TO. Yeah, and like or, I said, that, oh boy, I'll, well, next time I tell Amy, I'll, next time I see Amy, I'll let her know that she didn't help out. She me. was not well, answering the rules it. questions. <laughs> That's fair. That's completely fair. Uh, yeah, I know, like, even the questions I had was just like, boy, we didn't think of that. <laughs> it was just a quick sand, quick buff. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, Google sucks. Uh, you can only record for an hour, so we had to uh, cut. We're back. Uh, so I was in the middle of asking Neil a question, and uh, we'll just start back like uh, I didn't ask it. So, Neil, did anything go worse than you were expecting? Nothing really went worse. Uh, there were some, uh, some little hiccups with uh, some of the cards maybe not working out exactly as I thought that they would. The treachery cards, which were cards that you could play uh like interrupts in the game um so but that's easily rectified for the next event so um i i didn't see anything myself that i looked too far off the cuff from what mm -hmm. i had originally planned for the event uh, seemed like people were having a good time so yeah. um i guess when, when i get my survey back we'll find out if that was really the case <laughs> or not yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, way out uh, I agree um like i said there was nothing Everything worked out pretty smoothly. Um, I know my first round, uh, you know, we were doing, we were doing a little more, like everyone wanted to do the, like the true triumph and treachery style, where you pick an enemy and everything. And I was like, this doesn't feel like it's working, guys. I don't think it's the right way we're doing it. And I was like, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to be a party pooper. <laughs> I will say, in an effort to, to make things as simple as I could. Um, I think I did need to expand, much like the the new 3.0 rules, I think yeah. I needed to expand upon <laughs> what my intentions were for these rules a little bit more than what I did in that just uh, singular page there. So, um, yeah, and like I said, I don't think, I think largely there, you know, it was not a big deal. Um, I, I think, honestly, for me, one of the things that I thought went better than what I was expecting was the transition of this what's essentially a 2.0 module being layered over top of third edition with very little time to really play things out mm -hmm. um you know again like i said there was a little couple rough corners here and there but it was mostly trying to just push the square peg through the mm -hmm. uh you know the the octagon hole like <laughs> yeah it really it really turned out in uh, into kind of a beta test <laughs> yeah <laughs> it turned out into a, a, a 32 uh, player beta test for these uh, 3.0 into triumph and treachery or at least my style of triumph and treachery so it'll be interesting when we kind of go back and take a, a look back at it what worked what didn't work um having you guys uh, and and more uh, that i know played in it uh what your feedback will be and i think we get it pretty well cleaned up yeah yeah, honestly, I think the um, the only constructive like feedback I have, which again I'll fill out the survey. If you went to if you went to bars, fill out your survey, right? That's right. Um, is uh, the last game we had multiple prolonged debuffing treachery cards going on simultaneously. Mm-hmm. And so basically it made it so the whole table couldn't do anything until like round four. Like it was just, it was so debilitating that I think like we could do something simple like do um, each player can only have one card active at a time. Mm -hmm. Or is that way, even if it's an instant thing, okay, I did an instant thing, I could do another instant thing. But yeah. if I have one card out... If I put out another card that stays out, it either replaces the old one or you just can't. Um, mm -hmm. I think that'd be something super simple and super easy. Um, because the last thing, like, again, you want some, like, for lack of a better term, oppression. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, you want that every once in a while um, because it is a game element. It's fair playground, but 
you have to put it in knowing, like, okay, the people who are going to be the target of this are going to be cursing under their breath, which is like, okay, but that's what I want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we want, we want it to go, like, from cursing, like, there's, like, a gap. There's, like, I don't care, cursing under my breath, to go, can I please just pack up my models? So if we could just... <laughs> and so, like... <laughs> just want to stop us from getting that last level right and i think i think each one of the cards that i saw that lasted more than one more than an instant was good at doing the grumble it was like typically it was either the meh i'll be fine or grumble grumble and then but like i said my last game was the only time where we had multiple cards piling up and it was like then it was like not pack up but we were at the bottom end of grumble grumble (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like I said, <clears throat> largely those were the cards that I did. So, <laughs> uh. now I will say one of the cards was the sevens. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no, there was no ah, ah, ah. That was, <laughs> That's <yeah>. too bad <laughs> <laughs> because it was like everyone was just rolling seven constantly and. Uh, the player just like poor poor Mike. Every time it happened, he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna kill another thing of Mike's. Yeah, another thing of Mike's is dead." <laughs> yeah. So I feel bad for him, but like I said, it it still wasn't the end of the world. Yeah, we could maybe maybe turn that one to one mortal wound instead of D three. Might be a little mm. bit better off. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, I, I think there's there are plenty of ways to. Mm-hmm still keep that card with the flavor that's intended. Um, mm-hmm. like I said, we can we can literally have an entire episode of just card theory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, we could. Which, if you're not into, uh, Cole, you know, we might have that episode before next Oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't mind. That'd be fun. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, so was there anything else you wanted to add into bars before we, we move along here? No, you know, we'll we'll do a little more, I'm sure, in-depth look at uh, just the event as a whole and everything. Yeah. Um, I think it went pretty smoothly, start to finish. Uh, it was, uh, I don't think, I think the time limits and everything were okay, but uh, there's questions <laughs> about that in the survey. <laughs> we had a couple people go a little bit long, but really I'd say yeah. on average, most, most people were done within the time limits I put yeah. You know, and so, um, or maybe, maybe 10 minutes after, which again, for, for a narrative style event where you're not worried about trying to squeeze three games into a day. You know. Yeah. I think the times were spot on. I, I don't know how you did it. I, I, I was like, wow, he really got those right where they need to be. Um, now this might just be a me thing. I think the, cause we had what, a two hour lunch. Mm-hmm. I think that might've been a little too long because like, yeah, by the time you know, the second round came around, I was like, it's like, it went from like, because for me, Warhammer is a momentum thing. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, game. All right, let's get the next game. But I was like, no, we got to wait another hour. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. again. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you say that because I'm, I'm a little bit different where like when I play in a match play tournament and I go, oh, the first two games, awesome, doing great. That third game for me is like, <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I'd rather, you know, it, like it sounded like such a good idea at the start of today. <laughs> and now I'm here and I'm 0-2 and, and I just kind of want to go, you know, eat some pizza. Yeah, a month ago, <laughs> this sounded like a great idea. Yeah, yeah but, but like I said, though, at the end of the day, it's like you're still talking about like something that is still in the 90 percentile. Like if I had to give it like a letter score, it's still in the 90s. So like whatever, like the biggest, like thing that can be changed would still get like a 93 dude you did it awesome you yeah, uh, awesome. yeah i know awesome. you you gave gave all of us a lot of credit but i mean at the end of the day you're your mother brain piloting the ship so mm. well done i appreciate brother. that awesome glad uh, you guys had fun cole oh, was yeah, there anything definitely. you wanted to add or anything no i thought it was great uh i love how damn powerful everyone's narrative hero was by the end of it it was 
cool. Everyone was a little broken. It was great. <laughs> it might it might have been a little outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> it was entertaining. I don't mind if everyone's broken. It's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, that actually reminds me. I wanted to ask. I want to see what you thought about something. So like, so for for those that haven't been following, the last um, the last thing of the event was an arena fight. Um, I so like so I got absolutely crumped because I didn't have a, a forbidden artifact. And the person I was fighting against literally just had like a oh you did damage to me, well here's damage back. And so like <laughs> I didn't roll uh, I didn't roll for very many wounds, so I literally did like five damage and then killed myself based on the damage that I did before, or he did attacking me. So, like, so there's no... So I'm wondering, what do you think about, for people who are dead serious about getting to the arena and, and winning the tournament, mm -hmm. the cost of entry, or, or the, the, the prereq, is to have a forbidden artifact? So the, the way I was looking at that tournament was... Um, it was supposed to be just kind of a fun thing, oh, right? To kind of take up time, because because I knew I couldn't play a fourth game. Yeah, there was just no way. There's no to get people home on a on a Sunday event day unless you're trying to get home at uh, 11, 12 o'clock at night, which I know a lot of people are not interested in. <laughs> um, I, I know Chuck, as we were starting, that was like, I want to go home, <laughs> put up an extra <laughs> uh, extra table. I was like, okay. Um, so that's what it was meant to be. It was kind of supposed to be kind of silly kind of stupid and if there's one thing that was play tested the least it was oh, yeah. that because and, and some of the reason for that was is i had no idea who would have what um, or what combo who who would which character would look like what yeah. right i had no idea if if the levels that i set for characters or, or the, the abilities that i would set for characters how that would play through a little bit too uh consequently i think for the next one we are going to be dumbing down that power level quite a bit um, so that it doesn't get as outrageous as it did. It was meant to get outrageous, not quite that outrageous. Honestly, so, uh, I had no... I thought the, the different power levels were... I thought it was in a good spot. Uh, like I said, the only thing that I thought was that those... Like, there was basically... Um, there was essentially... you We created a class structure of those with forbidden artifacts the and those and without. Not. And again, yeah. I think that's my right. I think that's the right thing to do because they're so rare, they should be that powerful. And in a four, so there was, for those of you who weren't there and listening to this, um, <laughs> it was a tournament, there was four characters in a battlefield and it was a, a four player free for all essentially, just like the Triumph and Treachery games in general were four armies. And this, this just brought it right down to the characters. My hope was, it didn't seem to turn out this way, <laughs> that um, the have-nots would team up against the haves and, uh, and uh, try to eliminate some of them that way. Maybe it was just the luck of the draw in terms of the tournament order, but every once in a while one of those guys with the Forbidden Power Artifacts would, would get the first card, get to go first, go across the table, wham! <laughs> One's done. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that quick. So Yeah, I mean, that was one yeah. of the things. It's like, in... Like, so they, we could literally do an entire series on on trying to balance all that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I wonder, I wonder how, or even doing two tournaments where you have one of the forbidden power and then one of the the have nots. <laughs> to be fair, um, the final round was against two was two people with no forbidden power artifacts. Yeah, but what what war scrolls really run? Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, that was another thing. So the narrative hero had to be taken from uh, an unnamed, um, up to eight wound hero. Um, that you know, in a match play, you could give an artifact to or something like that. So, and if he was less than eight wounds, he got bumped up to eight wounds. It didn't matter if it was a grot, right? Your grot's getting eight wounds. And so there is a lot of play across <laughs> a lot of war scrolls. So is it possible to uh, to balance that? What I would rather kind of do is go for a certain power level, right? So a certain like, you know, this is the, if it looks like too much, then I got to take it down a notch. I know there's always going to be the haves and have nots based on how I set this up. So, um, right. 
so yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things we can do as far as that tournament goes. A lot of things I want to hear feedback from people on how that went. What I will say is the loudest cheers of the entire event happened during that tournament. Yeah. I, I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was one of the reasons why I actually brought up the, you know, needing a forbidden artifact to get in because mm -hmm. it almost seemed like the spectators were having more fun. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that was my reason to just have the two battlefields as well, yeah. so that you could get a bunch of people getting around pulling for the heroes. We also did that that betting um, uh, kind of bracket <laughs> as well, which which worked out okay. Uh, some people dropped out of the event um, before that, so um, we had some holes in the bracket. But otherwise, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping that would that would give you a, a dog in the race. So to I speak. was doing and pretty so, well with my bracket until. Yeah. <laughs> Until friend of the show Steven decided to somehow win. I, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 we can't get into it here. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. So real quick, let's let's <laughs> um, going back over to uh, the last article of the month. The uh, the big old world. Um, uh, article that came out uh, was that July twenty first, just or uh, twice, yeah, twenty first, just a little bit ago, and um, so Neil, I don't think you were privy to this, but but Cole and I had, had talked about doing a, an episode about the old world, what was just going to be pure speculation, and uh, I was going to do what I do best and just be a dick. <laughs> Uh, so basically what it was is Cole yeah. was going to speculate like, oh, I think it's going to be 15 millimeter. And then I would tell him why he's dumb for thinking it would be a 15 millimeter game. And then he would say, okay, well, do. it might be a 28 millimeter game. And then I would tell him why it's dumb that it would be a 28 millimeter game and clearly it's going to be 15. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I don't get to have that fun because we did come out with an article that gave us a lot of information. Um, so first and foremost, we can see we are still in fantasy Western Europe. Um, <laughs> that much has uh, has not yeah. changed. Um, of course, we got... Again, I don't know how... For the bases, were either of you surprised um, that, that we're hitting square bases? Go ahead, Cole. I am disappointed. Am I surprised? No. <laughs> I what about you Neil I am surprised that it is what it is from top to bottom 100% <laughs> whole thing um, I am surprised that it was ever up for question like the announcement trailer says everything comes round again even squares Uh, All right, maybe I was being a little hopeful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the square bases didn't surprise me as much yeah. as what it is. And what it is is the exact game. There will be some rules changes, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But it is the return of fantasy. 100%. Huh? Return of what yeah. fantasy was. Uh, I did not expect that. I expected some different take on it. Um uh, generally, you know, if you're let's let's say you're selling burgers, and uh, you're selling a lot of whoppers, but not a lot of junior whoppers, so you stop selling the junior whoppers. <laughs> Two years later, you don't usually bring back the junior whoppers. I was. <laughs> that, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so I was, um, I was a little bit uh, surprised by that. But now this is coming from a guy who's played fantasy since fourth edition. So, wow. and I love fantasy. Um, I've been there since uh, I won't quite say the start, but pretty far into the past with it. So yeah, um, yeah. Um, so uh, like I said, as far as other than that, uh, one of the big questions that I had was going to be scale, um, because personally for me, like you know, you see like the is it Flames of War that's the ten or fifteen millimeter, or no, what is I forget which which historical it is. Uh, that's that's ten or fifteen millimeter, where it's like okay, Forge World could definitely handle coming out with, you know, ten armies with little kind like you put four yeah. tiny dudes on one base. 
I could absolutely mm-hmm. see that. But at the same time, you have the, well, why would they come out with a whole brand new product that is only going to be usable for that game? Because even 30k, while those suits of armor, you know, while the power armor is not necessarily in use in 40k, if you love them that much, no one's going to stop you. Uh, right. So that was kind of some dichotomy because, again, we had Forge World. Like I said, they've said this is a Forge World product. And Forge World is not very good at creating a lot of anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I think we also got a little bit of those, uh, a little bit of, of insight into that, which we'll get into here in a minute, um, about you can use your old army. Uh, like I said, I think we'll, we'll get into that in just a minute here. And, and like you touched on base with the, with the rules, whether they're totally new or 8th edition, I... I, I kind of thought that it was going to basically be not ninth age, but ninth edition. Um, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. like... So, go ahead. They've already come out and said, you know, we're going to take the best aspects of all the other editions. So you're, you're going to see a lot of the... I would assume you're going to see a lot of the basic rules. You're going to see your strength. You're going to see your, um, your toughness. And those types of charts come back. Um, but as far as the rules, you know, that you'd see in between editions and stuff, they're probably going to pick and choose through that. Yeah. But I think the base mechanics are going to stay very similar to what uh, to what it has been in the past. Yeah. Um, now, uh, I think that's going to be for the best because the last thing you want to do is take the fantasy player that's been holding on for hope beyond hope mm-hmm. and ostracize them further. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Give give him something and take it away. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we're gonna bring back <laughs> fantasy just for you, little Jimmy. And really, yes, but it's completely different. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only little Jimmy's fifty. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just yeah. I just specify the size, not his age. <laughs> uh. Well, as long as, as long as I don't. As long as I don't have to get double turned. Oh, that's guess what? We've introduced the double turn. <laughs> oh boy! If you gave the double turn in that, I, there would be people. You would hear the strokes happening across the country. I think. <laughs> oh, which reminds me. Hold on. Bring it. Bring it back here. Bring it back. Hold on. One sec. One sec. I forgot to bring, mention something at the very beginning. So, there's a new campaign coming from this channel, and that is the war against those that war. Against the double turn. All right. Yeah. The three of us now are going to have a pact. Mm-hmm. Anytime we have the opportunity to to be double turned, we're taking it. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm right. actually writing my lists to be double turned at this point. Double turn me, daddy. Hell yeah! So Hell. that is you can already find the shirt. Double turn me, daddy. <laughs> On the merch store for Strength Hammer, it's on every Strength Hammer episode. I assume he puts it. Uh, uh, he puts the the link uh, on these episodes as well. So check that out. As of right now, we have uh, Chuck just put. I I made a shirt design and I sent it over to him, and he's like, "I need it, I need it." Mm-hmm. And so he put up his own little version, which is just text. Uh, but I want an image one, so so that'll be coming up uh, in probably the next month or so. Um, we are also going to be working on getting some. Uh, big M shirts probably will probably use the um, the logo on one. Uh, I'm thinking about doing like a Warhammer and Warhammies shirt. Um, but yeah, the the big one is Double Turn Me Daddy. So anytime you hear anyone bitch about the Double Turn, come at them with a Double Turn Me Daddy. Just ask for it. Just it. beg for it. Just yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Chuck wanted a, a an alternate of double turn me mommy, and I was like, I don't feel comfortable with that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> one step too far. Same. One step too uh, far. Uh, if you want that one, the same, yeah. I'm not trademarking or copywriting double turn me daddy, so feel free to make your own double turn me mommy shirt. I am not. <laughs> I'm not, not that route. I'm not yeah. related or involved with that decision in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> so, back to what we're talking about. <laughs> Double turn me daddy. All right. Hold on. Back, to the, back, back. All right. Back to the article. Okay. Uh, so, the other thing they were talking about is orcs versus oryx. Um, again, 
I've been all on board with all the new names, except for elves. Come on, man. Could have, like, elves already had, like, that's not their, never mind. I, I think this is a cool choice. I think it's glad, I'm glad to see them just going, look, this is what it was. This is what it still is. Um, you know, it's going to be orcs, dwarfs, whole nine. Uh, yeah. I'm glad to see them willing to just just take just go with it. You know, stop fighting. <laughs> we'll keep running with the old IP right. in this sense, yeah. Uh, and then the setting, I this was another one <laughs> that I was like, "What are you guys? How are we gonna keep this fresh?" Yeah, like, like I was like, well, "Of course, it's not after the end times. Like, it's clearly <laughs> going to be put in a new time period, just like 30k is ten thousand years prior to." Uh, 40k this could be set 10,000 years prior to the end times like it's not this was not this is not big brain move here this was pretty apparent if you ask me <laughs> um, now with that being said like with them being like hey we're just kind of taking stuff we've already come up with and we're taking the parts we like and move smooshing it together I'm a little surprised that the, the release date is still years away yeah, uh, they have to have time to be able to. I mean, if you look at most of what GW does, let's say they have a new concept for an army. From everything that I've heard, new concept for an army is at least three years, right? From the very first, this is what we're going to do, to the point where it's releasable to to the public, three years at least. So, I mean, what's it been? A year since they announced this? A year and a half? Year and a half. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. So, you, you know, years well, away. Listen, I mean, honestly. It's Forge World. So here's what I expect. And I'll bet you we're getting two armies, too. I think. I, see, here's the thing. is I Logically, I, I see where you're coming from. Like, we're getting Kislev. Mm -hmm. And so they're probably, they would want to introduce something new. Yep. But every time they've shown Kislev, who are they fighting? Demons. Not even demons. Corn. Just corn. Yeah. Every time. Corn, 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 corn. So I would not be surprised. And on top of that, you also have, even though corn is not fire, they're red mm -hmm. and they look right. Blue. So, uh, I I definitely would brace yourself for the Kislev corn demon uh, box set to get started. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that you re. I don't know how they're doing that. Why is Forge World? going to remake a corn army when Games Workshop well, so here's has the thing. all the corn. Here's the thing. Okay. They got a field of corn. <laughs> all of it. Um, I think I think we are not getting anywhere near the amount of models people think we're getting. I think we're getting repackaged the old stuff. Yes. Or hmm. getting I those think... molds dug up. I think we're getting Kislev and maybe one one army a year if this takes off. Um, but other than that, I think we're getting Kislev. And then I think we're going to get print to order on everything that is, you know, top tier fantasy or, or legends stuff uh, that you just don't need in, in AOS. Like dwarf miners and dwarf rangers are pretty important to the, the dwarf army. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see those be a print on demand. Um, I would not expect new corn models. Nah. I think you're going to be using the, the blood letters that you're using right now. Right. Why wouldn't you? Like, right, why right, would you right. buy, buy new ones? Right. Right. Uh, and so I think more than anything, this is just a rule set. Um, because it is Forge World. Forge World is not huge. They are, like, they struggle to keep up with the demands of Middle Earth. And the Middle Earth community in comparison to the AOS community is almost non-existent. Even though I love each and every one of you individually. <laughs> On a deep, there you go. passionate one-way relationship right that's <laughs> <laughs> um double turn me mommy <laughs> but like like i look at uh, 
simply the Iron Hill Dwarves, which there is, it's a it's a popular army, but it's not an overly popular army, uh, just because of the price point of it. But like they can't keep the warriors in stock, and they can't keep the warriors in stock to the point where they have to say no longer available just so people stop hitting the damn button. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so like, and again, that might be, this might be a part of that as to why that's going on, but there is no world where we're getting a Kislev army, an empire army, a dwarf army, a high elf army. It's not going to happen. No. Abandon those thoughts. If you have them, if you're sitting watching this video going like, well, <laughs> flee for your lives. Well, what else though? <laughs> no. <laughs> If you're lucky, if you're lucky, you'll be able to buy it off of the Forge World site and they'll send you square bases. <laughs> yeah. I would I would love to see them reproduce the old tree man who was like this. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> nope. Ancient uh Tree Lord Ancient. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he was just two arms and like some stumps. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, so, so real quick, before we get ahead yeah. of ourselves here, uh, I, I meant to go a little bit slower, go a little more, more in depth here. So, uh, the reason why the three of us are here is because we all have kind of a different viewpoint on this game. Uh, me personally, I am hopeful and I'd like to see it be a game that I add to my repertoire to play every once in a while, maybe at the, after a long day of gaming at Nova or whatever, I can just throw out a block and push it forward and roll some dice. Um, Neil, you, like I said, you are the um, not interested veteran player of Forge, of Fantasy. And Cole, you um, are like, meh, if it turns out to be good and I don't have to pay a lot, maybe. <laughs> I'm not right, a pub. Yeah, <laughs> if, if there's actually people who will play it in my area, cool. <laughs> but I'm not going to be the guy who starts it. Um, so so let me ask. So we'll kind of go around here a little bit. Uh, Cole, since I've been, I've been picking on our guest a little much here, That's what fine. would get you to be more excited for it? Or let me let me do, let me do back up. Let me back up. What are your hopes for the game? If I were to be hopeful about this game, what I want it to be, I think what it's going to be would kind of hope for is just actually the human army simulator. It's going to be everyone fighting to take over the seat of power in the mortal realms, which. It's been so long since I even thought about it. I can't even remember what it's called anymore. Uh, but who gets to be the greatest of the human armies? Okay, so, you, so you're kind of looking at a little bit of a narrative. A little yeah, bit of a... much more of... I think that's where it belongs. Is It just it's a, it should be a narrative game. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I, I kind of see fantasy as very much more of a competitive game. Very game of millimeters. Um, it was. It was. I don't know if it should stay that way see i think the the biggest issue i have with a narrative thing like that or a narrative component in a game like that where you're so we have such a big army assuming that it's the same it's going to be relatively the same size as fantasy is mm -hmm. even in fantasy neil correct me if i'm wrong here whenever they wanted to introduce narrative the first thing they did was like scoop the army away and they're like here's your dude give him a story and play with him with the because that was the original path to glory i believe it depends on how far back you go <laughs> how far back would you like me to go well i'm just saying like i'm not completely off base not recent well it's obviously not recent <laughs> recent <laughs> fantasy is dead like it's <laughs> <laughs> Um, if, if I can just qualify that so fourth edition fantasy the very first box that I ever got was um, and some people still this shows up on Twitter every once in a while was the box set with the high elves and the goblins and the most classic art of all time in my life is that box and what you got in that box and if, if you're an old hat like me um, you remember that some of the army you got the elven spearmen elven bowmen, goblin spearmen, goblin bowmen, 
and you got a griffin in there as well. But the griffin just happened to be a piece of cardboard, about this big, <laughs> on a little stand. <laughs> and you got a, a orc wyvern just like that. And you got Grom the Paunch just like that. You had some cardboard terrain, whatever. Now, on top of that, what you got, which was really cool, was you got a, um, a campaign scenario mm -hmm. with a map that showed you how to position the battlefield and everything. And so you narratively played through that. They still do try to do this stuff with, you know, when they release their box sets, with, mm -hmm. even even Dominion. You know, they, they yeah. try to do, here, here, you can play through these. Nobody does it. Yeah. But back then... <laughs> You would actually play these things, and it was a lot of fun. I'm sure actually the Dominion ones was a lot of fun, but you know, no, thank you. Doesn't have the same. Yeah. Uh, this is, I don't know. There's just something missing there. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so that's that. That's narratively how it was, and you'd play through a story. Uh, that I really liked. Um, but as as the editions went on, there was less emphasis on that. So. Well, so then, um, if it went if it went the way of, of Cole's machinations and it was a more narrative product, would that be something that you would potentially look at and be like, well, maybe. Here's how I feel about it. So I love and still love fantasy. When Age of Sigmar came out and I, the, the day I opened up the internet, and this was at, uh, maybe a month after they, they blew up the old Which, world. Again, I, opened, I was like, wonder what's opening. going on in, Thank you for Go opening ahead. the internet. We really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Open it up. I said, wonder what's going on on the internet today. And then, boom, Old World was blown up. I was devastated, as, as a lot of people were, because um, this was, you know, a, a big part of my childhood. I think I started playing at 11 years old. Um, uh, and I'd always followed it. I didn't play it a ton. Much as I, I loved it, and I followed it through the years and, and all that, I never played a ton of games. Um, but I followed it through every single edition. So that was that was rough for me. And even with that love that I still have for it, it's like something that's, you know, that it was in my past. I've moved on. Okay, let's say um, you know, cheesecake was good, but now I got cheesecake with strawberries on it. And I don't need to go back to that cheesecake anymore. All right. Mm -hmm. I got the strawberries. Mm -hmm. I'm not going back. It was good, but I've got this other thing. So it, what, no matter what they did to it story-wise or anything like that, I'm just, I feel like I'm past, that. I'm past that part of my life. I don't need to go back to that again. I've moved on. All right, I got the, I got the new girlfriend now. <laughs> We're going to leave the old girlfriend back in the past. Okay. Well, I, I think you have a weird relationship with food. Uh, <laughs> we should maybe talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but um, so, so look. Now, again, I'm going to go a little hyperbolic here, so forgive me. I'm just trying to make sure I'm, I'm understanding where the fence is. So if Cole, Alex, Chuck, myself, even Dave, all have little forces of old world armies, mm -hmm. you're, you're like, okay, guys, you guys can, I'll catch you on the next one. Yep. Yeah, I because I, I, I'm not I'm not rebasing. I'm not getting a whole another <laughs> army on squares. I I used to have them. I sold them for Age of Sigmar armies. Uh, you know, does part of me wish I still had uh, my high elf army that I uh, I sold off for about hundred fifty dollars worth of paints I used to paint Archeon? <laughs> sure, sure I do. Um, but <laughs> again, those are gone now. If if I still had them and I didn't have to do anything at all to play the game, yeah, maybe. You know, but so, um, if we get you movement trays that fit round bases, you're in. <sighs> Here, Don't say maybe because that opens the I'm, door. I'm not. <laughs> the, the thing is, and this is the same reason why I don't play 40k. I actually have zero problems with 40k. I know I give it a lot of crap all the time. I have zero problems with it. Hey, hey don't um, you open I, that curtain. That's. <laughs> I don't have a brain that can keep more than one game in my head. Yeah. And even then, I struggle with that. So I don't want to have to open up a bunch of different rule systems and everything. I, I have one very technical game I play, and that's yeah. enough. That's a, And I'm also sort of a completionist as well. So <laughs> rather than buy something for the old world, I just want another Age of Sigmar army, like that Dragon uh, Stormcast army we were talking about that I'd never have. <laughs> I would do that instead. Yeah. You know, I, God, I'm just yeah. not going to go backwards. I'm going to keep pushing forward, keep getting, you know, if I could get everything in the Age of Sigmar, the, every Age of, Age of Sigmar army, 2,000 points of it, I feel like a real happy guy. See, that's, that's never going to happen. That's interesting <laughs> to me because, like, um, 
because I love variety and I love changing things up. I love trying new things. Like as of right now, I could sit down and play AOS or Middle Earth um, or uh, you know Seventh Edition 40k, <laughs> but at the same time I could also sit down and I could play basic Dungeons and Dragons Second, Third, Fifth Edition. Uh, Pathfinder first or second edition and I could go on uh, without like so much as like oh hold, hold on let me double check that rule okay all right yeah, I'm great so like and but again at the same time I don't win so <laughs> and, except for my last tournament uh, but you know we don't need to talk about that yeah. again yeah uh-huh. <laughs> um, so like I said I would I would find it because that was one of the things is like I was very interested in fantasy um but i couldn't find anyone to play with and it was also by the time i was interested in it it was astronomically expensive like i wanted to do um i had a 1000 point dwarf army that wasn't very good uh, but like i wanted to do a orc and goblin army real bad but uh at the time uh with the way i wanted to build it was gonna be like a thousand dollars (laughs) because <laughs> I wanted that big block of a hundred orcs and at that point in time you're going to do uh, I think it was box of 16 for 40 I was like okay well that's that's a quarter yeah. of the army <laughs> Oof. that's uh, rough so I kind of have some hopes for it and like I said um, it uh, you know it's a little sad to hear you're that that far against it, but uh, again, at the same time, uh, I get you and I understand. Uh, I'm not against it for anybody else. No, no, like, no. I'm course glad course it exists. Course. I'm glad they are doing it. I'm glad they're bringing because I know there's some people who are just so far, you know, just so mad that I, like I was at, at the same time, but I just decided to move on. Yeah. Um, and I, and I enjoyed the simpler rule set, you know, when I moved on as yeah. well. But I'm glad that they're getting it back. So good for you. Go, go yeah, have fun. Absolutely. You know? And that, that kind of brings me over to um, one thing that I wanted to, to bring up. was like, you know, the one thing we hear a lot about is, um, oh, it's going to take away AOS players. I couldn't even begin to worry myself. <laughs> about that if you have somebody who's willing to abandon aos after all this time to go back to rank and flank they were never really aos players in the first place they were never happy right yeah these are these are the people who are complaining about the double turn hashtag double turn me daddy <laughs> and these were the people who still were like whoa carl franz wouldn't have done this and <laughs> um you know these are the ones that that have Every game you play with them, they bitch about something. Uh, so I think most yeah. people are going to be, most people that are interested are going to be like me, where it's, ooh, that'll be cool. That'll be a cool side thing to do. Uh, just like 30K is. You know, there are people that are hella diehard 30K. But I would say a, that 30K is not pulling from 40K. Like if there was no 40, if there was no 30K, I don't think 40K gets more players to a, nominal amount no um yeah I, I, don't worry yourself over it. <laughs> and if not if not you can go ahead and and, and leave a comment below <laughs> if you remember this three years from now when the game's out and and it and it cuts aos in half go ahead and leave a comment below i'll i'm sure chuck will tell me about it <laughs> um, i'll see it don't worry i'll let matt know now, now here's an here's an interesting idea that I had that I think I, I don't know how it would have how it would have played off, but I think it would have solved some problems that other people have, um, such as such as you, Neil. Whereas uh, instead of going back to the old world, they could literally just you can just add Kislev to AOS. I'm sure there's cold places in AOS. Don't just wait. Would you hold on? Don't poop yourself. On... <laughs> <laughs> Again, 
we know that the models that are currently being used for Age of Sigmar is not representative of what the citizens of the cities of Sigmar look like. The art is similar enough to be like, yeah, sure, but like their clothing has changed, society has changed, it's not a Ren fair every day. <laughs> so again, like I said, you literally have people, like the people in Aquashi probably don't dress the same way as the people in uh, Shaman. It's um, all cargo shorts and action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, so to have so to have cold weather gear is not a stretch of the imagination. Um, but I think the would have been interesting. I, I, I'm not going to say better because I don't I don't I don't know one way or the other. I just think it would have been more interesting if they would have done the thing where they introduced maybe a new model or a new army or some new alternate sculpts. Uh, and they make the old world, keep it an AOS, change the name, but you turn that into the 40k equivalent of Apocalypse, the big, you know, 30k game, you know, or 3000 point game plus, mm -hmm. where you come out with movement bases that are suited for rounds. So you take your large collection, you don't change anything, you just put them in the rounds, you put them in the movement tray that already takes the rounds, and you already have your army ready to go. You're not do you're not buying new products specifically for a new thing. You can if you want, because I said we can do kids level, we can do whatever. Um, and it get it lets Forge World do the thing that Forge World does well, which is the big impressive model. What are your thoughts, Jim? Yeah, I I'm I'm a fan. I like that. I personally think there's no reason we can't have a Kislev style Age of Sigmar army that's just been found in, I don't know, a Gyran forest somewhere that, yeah, where it's I mean, cold. I mean, I, I think it would be a great way to introduce. Um, oh, Neil's just done. Neil's just <laughs> dipping. Done. He doesn't <laughs> want any part of this. <laughs> well, like I said, I mean, it, it, it gives you your rank and flank. It gives you your old old world feel, but it doesn't give you that competing product. It doesn't go like, well, I because again, one of the things that I agree with you completely, Neil, is the last thing I want to do is take models that I can use for my AOS game and kind of put them in reserves because they have to be on squares to play the other game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's actually what I I imagined it was going to be it was. Uh, some some kind of like you instead of them coming out and having individual models on squares i imagine that if you're going to play an old world style game you'd have the movement trays with just the guys on there yeah right and they'd be removable in some fashion whatever but um you know cuz what it, what what eighth edition turned out to be was here's my giant unit right and it's 40 across and five to ten deep just this giant and what you'd have is a giant tree stuck in the middle of that movement tray right <laughs> because nobody was buying all those guys right. Right. It was. and so you had this tree that marched across the battlefield you know? it was just kind of silly you know it looked cool people made them look cool but man these these unit fillers and stuff i just thought that was always an abomination so that's what i thought it was going to be was something more like you know just a bunch of troops on a single base turn it, you know, do whatever you want to do, you know, and, yeah. and those single bases counted as a block of wounds, you know, and yeah. okay, once it's dead, it's dead, you know, and just to kind of simple, uh, simplify it a little bit. But um, that's, that's the way yeah. I was expecting it. If they would have went 10 or 15 mil, mm -hmm. um, because that's typically how that's played out. But uh, mm -hmm. whenever they were like, uh, you know, no, we're doing the, the 28 mil or, or 32 mil or whatever they decide, mm -hmm. um, you know, at that point I was like, well, yeah, now you're having, the one thing that I do have a hang up on is like the squares versus rounds because it's not it's not like you can magnetize them to the base easily. I mean, I guess you could if you put them on cork and then you magnetize the cork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I ain't doing that. That's... <laughs> 
Um, I think, like I said, I, I don't want to say it's a little bit of a miss in my mind. Uh, but I definitely think it would have been cool to have that uh, alternative high point play style. Um, you know, where again, you're not missing anything. You're not losing anything. You're not sacrificing anything. It's literally just, oh shit, I have like 10,000 points of Stormcast. Hey, who wants to play one game over two days this weekend? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get everyone together. Hey, you know, uh, uh, Roger has not, not our Roger unnamed made up Roger has, you know, he, he, he inherited his dad collection of orc and just kept running with it. We can all fight him, you know, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, but like I said, I mean, I'm interested, I'm still interested to see what the game is, where it's going to go. Um, I, let me ask you guys this. I, I think you, Probably we're gonna. I feel like we're probably gonna have the same answer, but I'm gonna ask it anyways. Do you think the game is going to be successful? Neil, are oh, you gonna make me go first? Mm -hmm. we, you, you're the. You have the most. Initially, <laughs> yes. Do I think it's gonna last? Depends on what they do with it, how they support it, what it turns out to be, like what we've been talking about. Are they putting out armies for it? Um, I just don't know that they're going to have that player base for it. Because, mm -hmm. boy, they better draw every single person back to that that they lost from fantasy. <laughs> because, you know what? It wasn't doing great yeah. beforehand. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm a little rusty I, I, on the numbers, but I think whenever they decided to pull the trigger, I believe Fantasy brought in 13% of the profits that year. Paint was out selling Fantasy by yeah. a good margin. Yeah. And a lot of that was some of the design choice with having to, you know, buy a thousand different models, you know, you know, buy 200 uh, slaves, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> to, to run a Skaven <laughs> army, you know. <laughs> I, you know... I don't know. It, it, it'll be interesting to see how the, how they are trying to pull this off to make it profitable again, and and which route they're going to take. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they just plan on putting out the same style of game and let's call it ninth ninth edition of fantasy, and it's been moved back in time, and blah blah blah, maybe maybe one new army. It's going to be having a up up uphill climb a little bit, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, with with the way that, that I've kind of theorized things, I think this is going to have a hard time pulling in new. And I think anyone that's held on to their old armies or built Ninth Age armies is going to come right back. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you think, Cole? I think, yes, those people will come right back uh, if they still have their army. That doesn't exactly make profit though and i don't see this game making enough profit for the shareholders to think that continuing to put money into it is a good idea well i'm wondering if this game is not intended for profit and no such thing i like that about that in business yeah i mean again if you look at it blood bowl is not raking in money hand over fist they're selling those models. They're selling those Blood Bowl models. Again. The so, like, so again, so as I don't know about your store, I don't necessarily know about about Toy Soldier, but I'll tell you at Warhammer Bridgeville, I don't remember the last time we sold any Blood Bowl. Same I thing with Aeronautica, same thing with Titanicus. These are these are not meant to be these gigantic revenue getters. It's basically to hold on the people that are on the fringe or pull in people that, that AOS and 40K didn't do it for them. They're and also no all smaller, smaller in size games, right. smaller model count. Whereas for what I got from this article, I feel like I should expect kind of what was the end of eighth, maybe a little bit smaller in army size. 
I got that. I got that as well. Um, and so like I said, so I'm, I'm wondering if that's one of the reasons why we, it would be, that's, I think that's one of the reasons why I don't think we should expect to see a new army. I think this is the main product is going to be a book. And I think, so one of the previous episodes that we did was where cities of Sigmar go. And because they have to do something with it, uh, you know, and now the rumors are coming out that, uh, the Dawnbringer crusade is going to be the human army, which is going to also be, um, uh, which is also going to be, um, you know, a little bit less of the other things, you know, uh, it's going to be a little less or a little less dwarfy, a little less elfy. And I think this is going to be a perfect thing to be like, okay, you want to keep doing your Cities of Sigmar? We're not going to put out new, you know, um, I can't think of anything. We're not going to put out new Iron Drakes. Assuming they're not going to do the next, um, <laughs> assuming they're not going to do, uh, you know, my, uh, my dwarf army. <laughs> and right. this is like yeah. and this is going to be the um this is going to basically be what keeps it going. Yeah. Uh, if it's if it's just a book and it's just rules, yeah. I could see that as profitable, right? Uh and if it's a, a new model or or maybe one new army or something like that, I could see that as profitable. Um but if they try to recreate fantasy, I think they're going to have an upward climb for sure, but we'll yeah. See. yeah. I think so. And, and like I said, I mean um, it's just a lot of odd decisions piled on top of each other and I think that if anything yeah. that's probably the thing I'm most interested in is to see what the hell are you guys going to do with it yeah, <laughs> yeah. it will be interesting I, I will be watching that's for sure even 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 outside of the, the interest level I will be watching and like I said we're, so we're going to this is definitely not going to be the, the last episode that we do about Old World uh, I'm very interested to see where it goes I'm very interested to see how many of my theories are right because I said I really I really buy that the the Dawnbringer Crusade is going to be a human army the the Order of Azir people are waiting for and you know whether there's going to be alternate races in there like we're going to have one off dwarf and elf models maybe yeah um, but I, I think this is going to be, I think they're looking at this as another way to add such as Sigmar models. Um, I kind of hope it is. Um, you know, I kind of miss, like whenever I started, Forge World was like this little mystical place that no one ever ordered from because things were weird costing and like, yeah. but it had all the really cool models that you couldn't get anywhere <laughs> in the store, you know? Uh, and to have it kind of hark that back a little bit, I'd be for that. I don't know. I like being able to just walk in the store and look at it and be like, eh, sure, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. 100%. <laughs> like I said, I, I, I can see it either way. Um, but um, we, we got Google yelling at us. We got three minutes left. Um, yeah. I think all three of us get a little tired. I know. Um, if I have additional things to think of that I'm not thinking of now, I can always make another episode or attack onto the one we did like I did Why last not? time. Why not? Yeah, um, it'll be fine. So I think we'll wrap it up. Uh, you guys have anything, any final thoughts? No, nah, just, I mean, whatever it is, I mean, for Games Workshop's sake, I kind of hope it's successful just because I want to keep making us more products. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's yeah. about it. Yeah. My final thoughts would be, um, if you if you're really into it and you're if you can't wait to get back into it and it releases and, and you're you're loving it and you're having fun, awesome um, old fantasy players, I'm happy for you. Um, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, call's gonna end here. So, we, uh, anything else we got, we can finish up in a message here. But um, I want to thank everyone. Uh, for tuning in, especially if you made it this long. Uh, we are part of the Strength Hammer Underground. Never forget that. We are a true force. We are much bigger than what Strength Hammer is normally with stuff. Rise! 
from the sure. no, stay <laughs> no stay in the under underground St i'll see you next month oh no i'll see yep. you at the end of the month new episode just i'll talk to everyone later goodbye everybody bye everybody <laughs>